Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to New Center Maine's digital newscast at five. We have a rundown of your local headlines and a full weather forecast with Keith Carson ahead. But first, the Maine legislature has officially started its work. Lawmakers were sworn in today at the Augusta Civic Center because it allows more social distancing. New Center Maine's Don Kerrigan has our continuing coverage. The 130th legislature began its session away from the state house and under the cloud of COVID-19. Because the mask is harming people. Lawmakers greeted by anti-mask protesters outside the Augusta Civic Center. I say your name. Inside, masks mandatory, everyone six feet apart and no families. And with Janet Mills self-quarantining, no governor either. Leaders of both parties in the Senate made it clear the job is about dealing with the multiple challenges from coronavirus. Maine people are counting on us to put them first. Let's show them that we were right, that they were right to put their faith in us and trust in us. So I think that, that our job here today is to make sure that the people of Maine are taken care of. And that means that we need to work um, with, the, with the Senate president and the governor and we all gonna need a seat at that table. In the House, newly elected Speaker Ryan Fecto said similar things. Now for all of them, the real work begins. In Augusta, Don Carrigan, New Center, Maine. And tune in to New Center, Maine at 11 for our full coverage, or you can head to our homepage at newcentermaine.com or our mobile app to read more. You'll find the article under the local news tab. Governor Mills is in quarantine tonight after a member of her security detail tested positive for COVID-19. New Center Maine's Zach Blanchard has the latest. Yeah, the governor says she's not yet experiencing symptoms, but does plan to get tested tomorrow. Mills first announced plans to quarantine in the Blaine House for the next 12 days last night after a member of her security detail started to show symptoms of the virus. Now today that person has tested positive. The last time Mills was in contact with them was Saturday, masked and distanced in a vehicle. The governor says she plans to continue to stay home and work remotely out of caution. Well, I have no symptoms. I'm feeling pretty well. I'm taking the same steps that we advise everybody else to take. This virus is everywhere. No one is immune. Now, the CDC says contact tracing has been conducted and no other members of Mill's security team have been impacted. I'm Zach Blanchard, New Center, Maine. The U.S. CDC is finalizing plans to shorten the recommended length of quarantine for those exposed to COVID-19. The new guideline would allow testing during quarantine to, turn, to determine if it could be shortened from 14 days to 7 to 10 days. Dr. Nurov Shah, director of the Maine CDC, says they are reviewing and evaluating the new guidelines for Maine. So they are also providing guidance now that recommends that states can, after we evaluate it, also shorten the quarantine period for people who have not received the test. Again, our medical epidemiologists are reviewing that finalized guidance literally as we speak today. We're gonna meet, confer, and discuss what's best for Maine. Now, Dr. Shaw clarified that the guideline change is only for people in quarantine who may have been exposed to someone who has COVID-19. Um, people who actually have been diagnosed should be in isolation. The Maine CDC reports 232 new cases of COVID-19, four additional deaths just in the last 24 hours. According to the Maine CDC, there is just there are just over 2,400 active COVID-19 cases across the state. Since March, Maine has had more than 12,200 cases of the coronavirus. A church in Sanford is hanging these white ribbons to remember the Mainers who have died with COVID-19. The Reverend at North Parish Congregational Church says she wanted to do it to honor those who have passed, and she hopes it'll be a wake-up call for people to take this virus seriously. It's a reminder to people that, um, you know, this is serious, and that we need to take the warnings from the CDC and from our governor seriously and wear masks and you know follow the guidelines uh, because as we know in Maine it's all over the place. The Reverend says so far reaction from people has been heartwarming.
Time for a look outside. Keith Carson joins us today a lot better today than it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the next couple of days look quiet and, and decent enough. Cindy. Good. Nothing that's amazing, but it's going to be uh, sunny again tomorrow. Uh, temperatures for the most part in the 40s today, but look at Caribou and Holton in the 50s. Some of the warmest spots in the state earlier this afternoon. Hour by hour forecast tonight, isolated flurry into the mountains, but tomorrow's a nice day. I actually think it's a sunnier day on the whole. Uh, for most of the state and areas in western Maine saw some clouds this afternoon. That won't happen tomorrow. Temperatures will end up between 40 and 45 degrees for a high, which is about average for this time of the year. And then Friday we do introduce some more clouds. I think especially the case in the afternoon as the storm system uh, starts to approach. But it's a decent day again. Temperatures once again in the mid 40s or so for highs and then things get more interesting for the weekend. A lot more interesting. Let's talk about that. So we still have two distinct camps this weekend. The European model, which brings a storm in on Saturday and really gets this thing cranked up. We've got wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles an hour along the coastline with cold rain. And then we have significant accumulating snowfall inland, especially into the foothills and mountains on Saturday night and Sunday. And then we have the GFS model, which continues to suppress this storm and push it out to sea largely with just a little glancing blow, if you will, to us on Sunday. So we're a little bit more in the European model camp here, and so we've got the storm penciled in for the weekend, but it is worth noting that the GFS refuses the cave. In fact, the latest one is coming in right now at my desk, and I was checking it, just kind of glancing across, and I can see it's still out to sea there. So we will keep that in mind, but tell you that as it stands, we think we'll see cold rain and wind along the coastline on Saturday into Saturday night, and we'll see accumulating snowfall into the mountains and foothills that could be uh, in excess of six inches if the European model ends up being correct, and uh, probably a lot more than that in the higher terrain on Saturday night and into Sunday. So a lot to think about for the weekend. The weekend hangs in the balance based on the model output there. After that, it does look like a cool period of time for Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday temperatures will be between 30 and 35 degrees and we do get in a little bit of a rut temp wise through the middle part of next week until we break out probably late next week with some warmer temperatures. Sydney, this is an interesting one too because typically I have a pretty strong gut feeling on it. Um, I'm still in the Euros camp that I think we're going to get the storm. I don't think it's going to go out to sea, um, but I could see a version in which we have a, a middle ground and the storm is maybe a little bit warmer and a little bit weaker. So um, okay. we wow. will we will keep an eye on that. We, yeah. can, we may end up with a, a compromise. It's not Washington after all, right? <laughs> just find a middle well, ground. Well, it somewhere. certainly bears watching. Yes. Yeah, hopefully we'll find that middle ground. Keith, thank you. More than 55,000 lights will help kick off the holiday season tonight in VZ. New Center Maine's Hannah Yeshivi gives us a peek at what visitors can expect. The day after the show was to go on was a day of cleaning after the winds blew through. Rick Hathaway spending the day fixing holiday displays damaged by rain and wind earlier this week. His annual light show moving from his Bangor home to the VZ Community School. The location of their new residence didn't lend itself uh, for such a public uh, a public spectacle. So the lights will go on at the school and donations accepted. All to raise money for Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center's neonatal intensive care unit. The NICU is very close to us as our, our sons were born 29 weeks premature and Warren spent 51 days in the NICU. His uh, brother Alex passed away early off in his, uh, in his battle. The dancing lights are from 4.30 to 8.30 every night until the end of the month. In VZ, Hannah Yeshivi, New Center, Maine. So we want to thank you for streaming New Center, Maine at 5. We'll have more news at the top of the hour. You can also find more coverage right here on our website and our mobile app. You'll find tonight's local headlines under the News tab. Have a good evening and we're back at 6.